Today we have something a bit different on the channel. We're going to be running through all of the American U.S. men's national team players that played over this past weekend of games in Europe and just outlining some of the some of the key performances, some of the players to watch as we, we head into the road to November. It's almost here. It's fall's coming and that means World Cup is coming and this U.S. men's national team, this lineup is going to have to be decided. But first up, we have got Weston McKinney. Obviously, for Juventus, he's now wearing that number eight shirt. And starting for Juve in, the, in their opener, in their Serie A opener, playing a very attacking role. Did not score, did not assist, but in the buildup, he was there. He honestly had a great performance, in my opinion. I watched the game. I thought he was making good runs. When you see that Vlahovic first goal, McKinney did not get an assist that goal, but McKinney it made the initial run into the box, which launched that attack for Juve. So it is good to see McKinney in that role. And the biggest thing of Weston McKinney is staying healthy in the, in the lead up to November. He was given a 7.0 rating, which honestly isn't bad for a game where you didn't do too much defensively he was in more of an attacking role sort of left mid role if you like didn't get on the score sheet or assist so getting a 7.7.0 7 really outlines how influential he was in the build-up he definitely yeah the, com the combining play was a very attacking role i was surprised at how attacking he was but with the U.S. national team, that's probably what he's going to do as well. Tyler Adams, who we're going to talk about later, is going to sit in behind. And McKenney's going to have the freedom to roam around the pitch and make things happen on the offensive third. Next up, we have Chris Richards. Chris Richards just made his Premier League debut for Crystal Palace, coming on in the late stages of that game against Liverpool on Monday. He did pretty well. Got four clearances in like five, five around nine minutes he was on the pitch for. But it, it was a... It was a very stressful moment for Crystal Palace, holding on at Liverpool, at Anfield, trying to get a point in Chris Richard, Patrick Vieira trusting in him to come onto the pitch and make something happen, which you love to see a, a young American coming in at a big stressful moment like that and playing well. No, no regret from Patrick Vieira bringing him on. He played very well. We are still yet to see how his role is going to sort of appear in this team, if he's going to even make some starts in some sort of... FA Cup comp in some other competition in the domestic domestic cups. That's where I think Chris Richards could do some serious damage, which is is just, you love to see it. You love to see it. Next up, we have Haji Wright playing in the Turkish league. Gets his first goal of the season, diving header to win one 0 The only goal of the game gets an eight point oh rating. But besides that, it was a bit of a disappointing performance from Haji Wright. He was dispossessed five times, and that is just not going to cut it. As a striker, you need Good hold. I, even if you're a traditional number nine, even if you're a number nine that's just going to go out there and score goals, you cannot be you cannot be dispossessed. You cannot get the ball and be dispossessed that many times as a, on a percentage basis. You cannot have the ball take on runs and then just not make it past defenders. It is not not cut out. It's not cut out to play number nine for the U.S. men's national team. And that is a big question around this team: is what is Greg Berhalter going to do with lineups? How is he going to send the boys out? We do have a lot of attacking talent, as we're going to get to later: Christian Pulisic, Brendan Aronson, Gio Reyna. But no outline number nine, no number nine that we are like, this is our guy. That is still a position that is up for grabs and similar to the defensive part of the field with uh, Chris Richards as well. Malik Tillman for Rangers scores the opening goal of the game. What a performance from the main lad. Highest rated U.S. men's national team player playing this week. Got an 8.3 rating. Highest for Rangers as well. He was definitely all over the field. He was only dispossessed one time. So he held on the ball pretty well. Making good runs. Combining well. But it was a dominant performance from Rangers. It was a 4-0. Absolute battering. So when things are going well, things are going well. So it, it, you, you don't want to take too much into it. But scoring that first goal does... Gives, gives some hope. It does give some hope that he maybe can break into this team coming in the next month because Greg Berhalter said that he is going to make decisions for this World Cup around form, around who is playing well, who is playing in these top leagues, getting goals, getting minutes. A big thing is minutes for these guys because a lot of them are moving to good teams, but some of them aren't getting minutes. And speaking of minutes, we are talking about Christian Pulisic, our, our Captain America, our number 10, the main man, the face of the U.S. men's national team, one of the first guys to break into, into, the, into the European stage and really... Do something with his talent. But Chelsea drawing 2-2. And Christian Pulisic, he was not involved. He, he was very nice. He came in the 85th minute. Did not do much. What are you going to really do in the 85th minute? You're coming on in a hostile environment. You have, the, you have the lead against Tottenham at home. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
but there is thought and a, a conspiracy, not a conspiracy, but a rumor that Christian Pulisic is moving to Newcastle United. The window still hasn't closed, and this is going to be big for a lot of these guys that aren't getting minutes right now is moving to teams where they can get minutes. I think the move for Christian Pulisic to Newcastle United is a great, great move for our number 10. He needs minutes. He needs minutes. And Newcastle has a team on the rise. Chelsea are obviously looked good. They looked really good against Tottenham. But Tuchel and him do not seem to be clicking on the offensive end. He does not seem to have a spot in this team. And that is the biggest thing at the moment for this, this young fella is he needs a spot. He needs somewhere where he can go. He can play. He needs to play. He needs to play minutes. He needs a start. And he, that is not going to happen at Chelsea. It does not seem like it's going to happen in the near future. Next up, we have the Leeds boys. Brendan Aronson and Tyler Adams. For Leeds, it was, a, it was a tough match. They went up 2-0. And then it just all started to fall apart. Southampton came back into the game, scored 2, and it was a 2-2 draw. But big news for South, big news for Leeds is Patrick Bamford did go off injured in the early stages of the match. That, I think, definitely affected Brendan Aronson. Because if you take a look at his performance in game week 1 against Wolves, he was outstanding. So creative. So in intense passionate he had a purpose about everything that he was doing and that was a bit down to Patrick Bamford's movement Patrick Bamford and him it seemed to have a great on-pitch relationship that was so fun to watch and then Pat Bamford went off and Brendan Aronson was just he just didn't have it today he did not have it in that game in on that pitch it was just it wasn't his day he did not get an assist did not get a goal but I think you can't expect this guy to get minutes. He is starting. He's playing all 90. Both Tyler Adams and him played all 90 under Jesse Marsh, which you love to see. And that is minutes in the Premier League, starting minutes. So these guys, man, they're going to have a lot, of, a lot of confidence coming into this World Cup, going against guys that they do play against on a weekly basis that are going to be starting for these other national teams. And then next up, Tyler Adams. He played a full 90 as well, which you love to see. Made five tackles. Five tackles attempted, five tackles won. You love to see it. Did concede two, but what are you going to do about it? What you, he's not playing center, cent, central defense, is he? He's a holding midfielder. He is running all over the pitch, and he is playing with a lot of intensity. He won six ground duels as well. So Tyler Adams is really cementing himself, and he is showing that he can do it. He, he can do it in the in the Premier League, but we're going to need this. We're definitely going to need a bit more time to take in information about these guys' performances and see what's more of a one-off and what's more of their consistent game week output and contribution to the team brendan aronson also he won nine ground duels for a person who is a majority attacker his strengths are an attack he's tracking back he's tracking back like crazy he's playing with a lot of intensity and that is just so encouraging this i think brendan aronson has to start he has to start at the world cup don't, I, I don't want to hear it. He has to start. He has to start. He's been playing so well. His form is just, I think, is going to continue. And he has shown that he is there to do the dirty work. And he is there to play for the badge. Brennan Aronson, a bit low pass accuracy form. 68% pass accuracy. But I think that was overall leads as a whole were not really. They, they, they weren't combining well in that game. As soon as their striker went off early, it really threw things out of, out of sync. Daniel James came on for Bamford. And I think that just, it, it was a new season new players things don't go to things don't go as planned the norm does not happen and it's not so much the performance norm but it was the players you are looking around you're looking at your up, up in the pitch and you do not see your number nine you don't see patty b up top and that really throws things for a loop but those are the guys we highlighted this week let me know what other guys you guys what other us men's national team players you want to see highlighted on the channel we're gonna do this on like a weekly basis on like a, a monday or tuesday depending on when the game most games end that week when the champions league rolls around we'll do it then as well but that's gonna do it for the video if you guys enjoyed leave a like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time peace